Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon and today I'm going to be explaining the ending of Talk To Me. Now, this should go without saying, there's spoilers in this video. <laughs> also, if you've already seen my first thoughts video, I'm essentially just going over the same theory that I said in that video, but I thought this would make a good video on its own. All that being said, if you haven't seen the movie yet, here's the plot. It follows a group of kids who play this Ouija board adjacent game where there's a hand that if you hold on to it, light a candle and say a few words, you're able to see and communicate with the dead spirits. There's rules for this game though that if you break it, things can go horribly wrong, one of which is that you will be followed by spirits forever. This happens to the main character, but she doesn't seem terribly upset by it because one of the spirits is seemingly her mother. But she is warned that there are evil spirits that are not who they say they are and can take on the appearances of other people. She chooses, however, to believe that's not the case with her mother because it's her mother and she wants to believe that it's real. So whatever the spirit that claims to be her mother tells her, she just believes it and does it. And as an audience for a while, you might think it's actually legit and you might think that it really is her mother, but as the plot goes on, you see that things are not what they seem to be. This is told pretty explicitly through a scene where she has a boy sleeping in her bed when a spirit comes over and <laughs> starts sucking on his toes. <laughs> what we end up seeing, however, when the boy wakes up is that it's not actually the spirit doing it, it's her. So you're wondering, maybe this is a sort of like the movie Smile, where the evil spirit is doing things, but to other people it just appears that they're doing it. But it still lets you know that the things that the main character believes are happening aren't what everybody else believes is happening. So then when she's seemingly attacked by a spirit pretending to be her father, she grabs a pair of scissors to stab him, but instead stabs her real father. This is shown as him coming in to rescue her and replacing the fake one right in time for her to stab him, but if we take into account the toe sucking scene, we know that it's actually not her real father that replaces the fake father at the last second, it's just that it was the real father the whole time who she then stabs to death. So she's being lied to by this spirit pretending to be her mother, who then continues to lie to her and tells her that she needs to kill the younger brother of her best friend. The reasoning behind this, according to the spirit, is that this poor kid is just trapped in torment by these other spirits and that the best we can do for him is to put him out of his misery. So the main character goes to the hospital with the intention of stabbing him like she stabbed her father. However, she ends up changing her mind for whatever reason and takes him in a wheelchair to the highway to dump him in front of oncoming traffic. This is a callback to the beginning of the movie where she came across a kangaroo that had been struck by a vehicle and was dying on the road. She's urged by that same kid to put it out of its misery, but she is unable to because she's just too kind. She's not able to do that. However, you can see that she has changed fundamentally in that she is willing to now kill this kid to supposedly put him out of his misery because she's under the influence of the spirit, which you now know definitively is evil because it repeats back the phrase of he'll be with us forever. Now she's supposedly saying this phrase in a comforting way, like we'll be able to take him in and he'll be with us forever and he'll be fine. But we know that this phrase was used exclusively about the evil spirits earlier saying that they want him forever. Regardless though, she doesn't have the chance to throw the kid into the street because she instead is thrown into the street seemingly by her best friend. We don't entirely get to see what happens because it switches to the POV of the people passing by and she just hits a windshield and then falls to the road, but I am led to believe that she didn't choose to throw herself and was thrown by her best friend. From there, I think, is where people get lost and need the explanation of what just happened because she seemingly stands up and then teleports into the hospital where then she sees visions of a bunch of seemingly random things happen. One of the things she sees is the young boy making a full recovery and leaving. But then she also sees her father, who she just murdered a couple scenes ago, walking toward an elevator that closes right before she can get to it. So what is all of that? Why did she just teleport? What visions are these? Well, the simple explanation is she died. When she fell into traffic, she died. And her standing up was her spirit leaving her body. 
and the hospital wasn't really literally a hospital, it was some sort of limbo that she was now in. So she's able to see events happen rapidly around her while also seeing spirits like her father, who gets into the elevator and seemingly ascends to heaven, maybe descends to hell, regardless the parts to a different place. We also see that when she looks into the mirror, she doesn't have a reflection, which is alluded to earlier into the movie, describing her recurring dream, which is her worst fear, which is that she she doesn't exist. And now that she is dead, she no longer exists. From there, everything goes black and then suddenly is lit back up again by the lighting of a match. From there, she sees a hand reaching out to her, walks over and grabs it. From there is the big reveal that she is now the spirit or one of the spirits associated with this hand communicating with the people in the living world. So essentially, she's tricked by the evil spirits, she ends up dying and becomes trapped with the evil spirits forever. Happy ending! Honestly, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward, but I thought the whole elevator thing with the father and the hospital in general was a really interesting tidbit. This movie, for the most part, I thought was pretty good but not great until the ending. The ending I thought was amazing and a lot of fun to think about. But honestly, that's just my theory. That's what I thought it meant. What do you guys think, though? If you saw it, let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.